and that's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I love the kidney. <laughs> So when we do, when we um, check your kidney function, we're doing two things. We're performing a blood test to make sure your kidneys are clean in the blood like it's supposed to. And we're also performing a urine test to check if, any, if your kidneys are wasting stuff that it shouldn't be wasting. So we check the blood for a protein called creatinine and also now something called cystatin C. And we use that to determine your GFR. Dr. McGill gets your GFR. That, tell, that number tells us how much blood your kidneys are filtering. And when we look at the urine, we check to see if there's any extra protein being wasted in the urine. So this is a picture of a beautiful, healthy kidney. On occasion, there will be an insult to the kidney. Um, for example, if your blood pressure is too low or your blood pressure is too high or you take a medication that injures the kidney. Um, so if there's an insult, the kidney is injured. Now the kidney has an important job of trying to repair itself. Sometimes kidneys can repair itself if you go back to having a healthy, strong working kidney. Other times the kidney isn't able to repair itself either because the damage was too bad or the damage is continuing and you end up what we call kidney disease or chronic kidney disease. So basically the kidney has scarred and um, you have to kind of deal with what you have and try to hold on to that. So diabetes injures the kidney by uh, interfering or, or damaging those tiny little blood vessels within the kidney. And when it does that, we have evidence that there's damage to those blood vessels, typically because there's extra protein being wasted in your urine. So that's, again, another important test that needs to be done, especially if you have diabetes, to see if, you have, if you're really getting protein in your urine. Um, we also have evidence of your kidney being damaged by your GFR, that number being lower than it's supposed to. So this is kind of like a GFR meter. So when you have normal functioning kidneys, your GFR is typically 90 and above, um, and down to 60. There's you know some some variability in that. But so normally, once, uh, normally your kidneys are working normal. Some people have damage to the kidneys where they're in this yellow zone. Um, in that area, your kidneys are still working pretty well enough to take care of what your body needs to do, but there is evidence of disease. And some people progress to the point where their kidneys aren't working well at all and they're in this red zone, what we call it kidney failure. And if the kidneys aren't um, doing what they're supposed to, people may need a replacement like dialysis, which is just a big machine that functions like a kidney, or they need a kidney transplant. So I mentioned, so can you tell me some of the things, what do you know the kidneys do? What, what are important jobs of kidneys? Make waste and get rid of waste. Anything else? So I have my job is important here. So we already mentioned that kidneys help you get rid of water. The kidneys also help control your blood pressure. If you have extra water and fluid in your body, uh, that leads to blood pressure being increased. So they also um, these different pork proteins and hormones that help regulate blood pressure. We mentioned the kidneys help you get rid of waste products. So when you eat, um, the kidney needs to break, um, break these um, foods down and take medications. The kidneys also help break medications down and you can get rid of that. The kidneys help keep your blood count up. They make a hormone that tell your bone marrow to make red blood cells. So that's important. The kidneys also help you make vitamin D. Um, they help you regulate calcium and phosphorus to help keep, keep your bones strong. And then lastly, the kidneys keep the acid and base level in your body in balance. So, um, as was mentioned earlier, the kidney disease is another disease where you don't realize you have it. You're not necessarily going to have symptoms. And I put this picture up here because a lot of people believe that when they have kidney problems, they're going to know that there's a kidney that's going to hurt. And that's not the case at all. <laughs> so, with kidney problems, the, the symptoms that you develop are usually pretty subtle. You don't feel it. You feel tired, similar to with diabetes, you feel tired. And a lot of times you just blow it off and say, oh, I, you know, I've been running around all day. So you can always come up with some reason why we're tired. Other symptoms, you can be short of breath, you have to develop swelling in your feet, your hands, your face. Some people lose their appetite, they're nauseous, not eat as much as they normally eat. Either lose weight again because you're not eating as much, or you're feeling sickly, or you can gain weight because you're holding on to extra fluid. 
The same thing with changes in your urine. Sometimes you can urinate a lot more than normal, um, or you can urinate a lot less than normal. And there are a number of other symptoms like itching, um, a, a, a metallic taste in your mouth. And I put back pain down here because that's not a common symptom, um, but it can be associated with other forms of so there is good news, and I'm going to share the good news. <laughs> you can prevent kidney disease if you don't have it. And if you do have it, you can slow it down. And so I'll give you a couple of steps on how to do that. So number one, just being here today, you've actually checked off a few of those. So we talked about why kidney disease is a big deal. We talked about what the kidneys are, what they do. And the next thing that you need to do is figure out how your kidneys are working. So when you go to your healthcare provider, you need to ask them, what is your GFR? And that will let you know where you are along the spectrum um, of kidney disease. As you get older, we tend to lose kidney function. So usually when you hit your 30s or so, your, your kidney function starts to, starts to decrease. But it happens so slowly that people tend not to have problems or they don't need any replacement. Um, but what you want to do is not speed up the process. You want to know where you are along that spectrum. Step number two, you want to protect your kidneys. If you have diabetes, you want to control your diabetes. If you have high blood pressure, you want to control high blood pressure because I remember I said that diabetes and high blood pressure are the two most common causes of the kidney problem. If you don't have either of them, you want to prevent those from happening. Um, the other thing we need to do is try to protect our kidneys by not doing anything that can injure them. So a lot of your over-the-counter pain medications like Motrin, Aleve, Naproxen, DC, Diddy powder, um, any of the extra aspirin that you, so some people are, are prescribed aspirin for their heart, so that's fine. When we take extra stuff for pain, that's what we want to discourage. So those medications can injure the kidneys. Um, sometimes contrast dye that you get for CAT scans can also injure the kidneys, so we need to be careful about whether or not those things are absolutely needed. And then lastly, sometimes herbal medications can injure A lot of times we feel like we're doing ourselves a favor by taking these non-prescription drugs and doing stuff that are, 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 are natural, but those can also be harmful. Step number three, you want to treat your kidneys. There are certain medications that we can prescribe that can help preserve your kidney function. Um, and then the other medications that we prescribe are basically to compensate for what the kidneys are doing above. So uh, we give you water pills, they'll get rid of extra fluid. Give you some medications to keep your acid and base uh, level in your blood in balance. We may give you medications to keep your blood count up because the kidneys aren't doing it enough on their own. And we can also give you medications to control your calcium, your phosphorus, and your vitamin D. Um, diet changes. We may ask people with kidney disease to change their diet in order to help control the fluid in their body and also to control the potassium, the phosphorus, and things that the kidneys aren't able to keep in balance by themselves. And then lastly, you want to protect your heart. We mentioned earlier that the, the big deal with, with kidney disease is that they tend to have issues with heart problems, um, heart attacks and strokes. And so um, you want to try to decrease the risk of that happening to you. Um, you can do that by controlling your cholesterol. Um, if you smoke, stop smoking. If you don't exercise, you want to exercise on a regular basis. And if you are doing it regularly, continue to do that. You want to eat a healthy diet, and if you're overweight, you want to lose weight. So things to remember from what I talked said to you this morning is that kidney disease do not doesn't have signs or symptoms. At least early kidney disease doesn't. Kidney disease does not go away, and as we get older, we tend to lose kidney function. But again, we want to try to um, slow that process down. And the good news is kidney disease can be prevented, and it can be treated. I hope you all appreciate the kids a little bit more after what I said to you this morning. <laughs> Does anyone have any um, questions right now? Um, I just had a, a cousin that passed mm -hmm. kidney disease and she did it, she was on the registry and I had no idea that it was like thousands and thousands of people uh, on, on the registry. What, what are we doing to educate people about registries and what to do and 
and how to make sure they get signed up mm -hmm. and get tested for those types of things because we have to help ourselves and our family in some kind of way. And I think we need to have better education on that. I know it's an open-ended thing, but I just think it's important to understand uh, about those issues. So she's referring to the kidney transplant registry. Um, and the problem is, you know, when it comes to, for example, African Americans or minorities, a lot of people don't sign up to donate their kidney. Um, so I'm sure there's a big effort with the within the transplant kidney community to try to get people more aware. But I think just being here in general, um, learning about the kidneys, what can help spread the word. And in terms of other drives, I'm not familiar with anything that's going on locally, but just being aware that kidney disease is a problem within the African American community, um, and that we need to sign up to be donators um, of our kidneys when, when possible.